Today we're going to walk through how to sequence servos in X-Lights uh, using the Pixel to Servos 12 board from Experience Lights. Now, uh, a servo, if you guys don't know, is a motor with uh, an internal feedback mechanism that allows you to set a rotating shaft to a very precise position. Animatronics that you see at Disneyland, Universal Studios, or even those talking skulls in the Halloween section of Home Depot all make use of servos for precisely timed movements. Now, before we get started, there's uh, a lot that I still don't know about the servo functionality with an X-Lights. Um, so this video is to help you, to push you in the right direction, but this is really for informational only. Um, Experience Lights does not provide support for other people's software, other software external. Uh, we provide support for our hardware only. So if you do need more help after this video, please reach out to the online forums for more assistance. But uh, hopefully this video can help you um, answer, uh, answer questions on how uh, to sequence servos. There is some really fun functionality. Um, but uh, as you'll see, there are some idiosyncrasies, maybe even some bugs um, that you kind of have to work around and, and, and get used to. So let's dive in. So first things first. Now, when you're using the Pixel to Servos 12 product, that's going to take up 12 channels with an X Lights. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this model called the channel block. We're going to create a new channel block and we're going to set this to 12 channels. We're going to call this Pixel to Servos 12. Now, most of the time, many times, you're going to be using this product but not actually using 12 servos. That's okay. But what we want to do is still block out those 12 channels such that um, if we're placing pixels before or after this board, the appropriate number of channels are mapped out. So we are going to have some channel overlap, but that is okay. So we're going to leave this here first. Um, keep in mind, um, and we'll talk about 8-bit versus 16-bit mode later, since we're in 8-bit mode, it is 12 channels. If you are in 16-bit mode, um, it is going to be 24 channels, but uh, we'll touch on that a little bit later. So, built into x Lights is a servo model. We're going to click on the DMX button, and there is servo. And we're going to draw a servo box here, and we'll call this servo one. That sounds very, very great. Um, and what we want to do is put this on a specific output of our Pixel to Servos 12. So instead of right now by default, it is putting it at the end of the Pixel to Servos. We're going to say start of Pixel to Servos. And then we need to determine which output it's going to be on. We're going to put this on start channel one. So that is going to map to the first output, the first channel of the pixel to servos. And you can see here, the servo one is has a start channel of one, has an end channel of two. Why? Well, by default, it sets the servo to 16-bit mode, which consumes two channels worth of data. Uh, one channel is going to be eight bits. Uh, two channels is going to be 16-bit. So we're gonna, for just starting here, we're gonna set this off um, and we're gonna set it to one channel. So it's gonna be in eight-bit mode. 16-bit um, mode is definitely way more precise. Um, it allows you to do way more um, precise movements with the servo. Uh, but uh, right now we're going to just use the 1-byte 8-bit uh, one, version, which allows you to go 256 steps. All right. So uh, what we're going to do now is set up some images so we can have a visualization of what we're doing. And we're going to first go into servo 1. And you can actually set some limitations here. Now, a byte contains 256 values, 0 to 255. Um, and in X-Lights, you'll see a brightness value typically from 0 to 100%. On the back end, that actually translates a value from 0 to 255. Um, and based on the range of motion of your servo, um, that is going to basically allow, give you your, your min and your max. 0 to 255. But if you want to limit that range of motion, you can actually do so right here in X Lights to say, okay, actually, I only wanted to go from 50 to 100. So when you're at 0%, it's going to be at 50. When you're at 100%, it's going to be 100. But jumping ahead of myself just a little bit, so we're going to put that back. We're going to do a 180 degree range of motion 
And when it rotates, we want to rotate around the Z axis. And what that allow, uh, brings up is this pivot offset X and Y. Now we're not going to do that just yet. First thing we're going to do is set a background image for this. This is the static image. This is the unmoving image of what is behind your moving item. So here we have a spirit meter um, and it has uh, these different values of being naughty or nice. And we want to have a arm on top of that, which is going to pivot. Now, remember when we set this to rotate Z, a little purple dot appeared, rotate Z, see that guy? That's the pivot location. When the moving, the motion image, where is that pivot point going to be? And you can change this position, move it around to where you want it to be. Now, I've already made my images perfectly square and um, put it so that the arm image is directly in the middle. Now, you might ask why I did that. Why did I make this perfectly square? Why are they both the same size? Well, this is one of those um, oddities with X lights that I don't fully understand, but if they aren't exactly square, if they aren't exactly the same size, when you do the rotate, it gets skewed. It does not work right. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to find out, so I just set them to squares. And what you can see right away is if we go to our motion image and we rotate the Z axis, and actually, by the way, you know, if they are different sizes, you can move it around um, and you can scale it to make it, you know, a different size if you want. But here we're going to set our default position for zero. Where do we want this to be when it's on the zero position? Um, I already set the image to where I want it to be on the zero position, which is facing towards the left. So I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm going to create a new sequence going to create a new sequence on animation, 40 frames a second, all models. We have our servos, and there is an effect called the servo effect, which we're gonna put right onto our servo one. All right, and um, this nice visualizer here allows us to set a value between zero and 100. And it goes all the way from the left all the way to the right, and it has this nice visualization of what's happening. And you can, of course, do a ramping value over time, which is nice, right? So how do you get this to, now this was a 180 degrees range of motion. So from zero to 100%, that's actually translating to zero to 255 on the back end. Now, if I change this on the servo one to 90 degrees of motion, and then go back here. You'll notice that now zero to 100 goes to here, 90 degrees. So now you can see it's very easy to sequence the servo to do whatever we want. We can do some fun things like back and forth motion. Now, um, uh, you'll definitely wanna be careful because this is changing a physical thing. If you're doing something like this, that servo is gonna freak out. Um, but you can, you know, get very creative with it. You know, we did um, some back and forth movements for the spirit meter to make it look like it was trying to find a value. And uh, that's, that's kind of fun. By default, you know, and it's hard to see on this screen, but 200, it's, it, it's creating a, an 8-bit value, which is 0 to 255. And that is kind of coarse. Um, meaning that it's not a lot of fine-grained control. So that's when you're going to want to use 16-bit mode to get higher resolution and more precise uh, positioning. Now, if you want to do 16-bit mode, you're going to have to flip the switch on the Pixel to Servos 12, switch it from 8-bit to 16-bit, and we're going to change this to 24 channels. That's how many channels it's going to consume in 8-bit mode, excuse me, in 16-bit mode. And uh, then on our servo, we're going to change this to two channels and 16-bit. Over here on our servo, we're going to change this to 16-bit. All right. Now, again, you can't see this, but 
the amount of values we are, you know, at 8 bit, we were talking about 255 values. Now we're talking about 255 times 255. We're talking about 65,000 values. So you can imagine the level of precision now you can get on position. Uh, so 16 bit, definitely way more precise than 8 bit. Um, just make sure that you're consuming 24 channels instead of 12. Make sure that your servo is set to two channels and 16-bit, um, and your servo effect is also set to 16-bit. And then you can do that for more precise control. Also, if you're doing 16-bit um, mode, your second servo, let's draw that. Remember, you're going to be skipping twos, right? So your next servo here is going to be at the start of pixel to servos, but we're gonna start on channel three this time. Remember, since this is 16-bit mode, servo one starts on channel one, ends on channel two, so it's taking up two channels worth of data now. Our next servo is going to be on channel three and four because it's 16-bit, takes up two bytes, um, two channels worth of data. Um, now, of course, you don't need to use, put uh, all of the servos um, on the thing, this channel block basically blocks out those channels so they're kind of reserved. And then you set the individual servo models on the channel or the output that you want. Then you can go ahead and sequence away and uh, that is it. If you guys have any questions on the Pixel to Servos 12 product, please email us at info at experiencelights.com.